big high toss. Uh, tail, nice and high. Uh, it's a tail. Cameron Ling wins the toss for the Cats. He'll be kicking to left of your screen or the punt road end in the first turn. Collingwood haven't been getting off to great starts and what I want to watch tonight or today is will they dare and will they take risks? We see last week against uh, Hawthorne, it took to the last quarter when they thought their season was over for them to go through the middle, run, carry the football. The shackles have to be off early, Dust. Uh, they cannot... Uh, let Geelong get off to a good start like we, that. We know the Cats are still the number one corridor team in the competition, so they will do that. They're a little bit more circumspect at times. They don't just do it blindly like they used to do, albeit incredibly successfully under Bomber Thompson. Whereas the Pies, that's been their formula. They will go along the boundary line today. But as you said, there may come a time where they have to dare to win this game and take a risk, and let's uh, find out if they are prepared to do it. Just confirming again the uh, subs today for Collingwood, Alex for solo. And for the Cats, Mitch Duncan, Jolly, Reed, Johnson, playing for their respective teams after injury scares. And all the youth, you see Cracker, Wellingham and Fasolo, and for Geelong, West, Stokes, Christensen and Duncan, all the strong bodies starting the match when the heat is on. Paul Chapman up forward for the Cats. There's Nick Maxwell just, just striding his way back into the defensive post, as you would expect. Lingy lurking around the centre of the ground at the moment for Geelong. Thomas and starting forward, Das. Yeah, he's done that a little bit throughout the year. And you'd expect him fairly quickly to drift up. Alan Didak gets a start. He's been the sub for the first uh, two finals. We know well, that he's... Got psychology in that, Das. I think it's great for him. He's a match-winning player who hasn't had a great year, it's fair to say. They put him straight down to the goal square and Matty Scarlett's going to pick up Alan Didak right on the fullback line. That's where Lonigan's role is so important on Chris Dawes. He has to hold up, hold together to allow Scarlett to be released. 2011 AFL Grand Final is underway. Collingwood versus Geelong at the first bounce. It's Jolly against Ottens. Jolly got the tap. Ottens fed it out to Selwood. Straight away off to Varko. Varko can go all the way. Runs to 45. Travis Varko! Oh, oh, what a start for the Cats! And it's his opponent, Leon Davis, is the matchup, and not the start to a grand final Leon Davis would want. You see there at the top of your screen, Davis trailing off Barco. You cannot do that at the start of a grand final. Must have your arm across. Davis, not the start he wanted. And the other thing that happened, Brad Ottens did exactly as you would hope. He smashed into Darren Jolly in the first bounce. Bowled the big fella over. Good news for Collingwood. Jolly back up to his feet, didn't miss a beat. But uh, Ottens said, I'm going to test you out first up. Make sure that you are ready to play. And I can't wait this next centre bounce again. Jolly now looking into the eyes of Brad Ottens. There'll be some nerves about Darren Jolly. Will his body stand up or will it let him down? Well, that's, of course, exactly what Collingwood did last year. At the start, it was Jolly who kicked that opening goal. High, high contact against Jolly. You see, Jolly didn't want to jump on that occasion. He just tried to keep uh, his feet on the ground and uh, an unnatural motion gave away the free kick. Ling Marks off the right boot. It's a mid-range kick for Chapman. Tuvi's got the roll there, Bartel. Steve Johnson tests the knee straight away. Into the pocket, Podsy Adley and Tarrant escorting the footy. So Two. you see that yeah. took his eye off uh, the contest, hand in the throat. And he uh, saw the first one coming. Otten's got hold of him, just didn't want to allow that to happen again. Davis plays on. Gains about 40 metres, shanks the kick. Went straight to Selwood, a tough one to control. Here's Mackey. High ball. Deep into attack. Flying third man up was Tarrant. Does the spoiling work. Maxwell. Throwing his weight around is Hawkins. Here's Selwood, quick snap. Ball smothered. Tap. Potty Adley goes to try and hack it off the ground for a goal, but only succeeds in getting it behind. We saw Hawthorne last week put so much pressure on Leon Davis and he's kicking out of defence, and we saw him shank that first one. They needed inside 50, the Pies. Yes, yeah, some sign of nerves. That's the safety first option around the wing. And Geelong knew where the footy was going. Bartel kills it, and it's out. Conditions at the moment are actually uh, good. The rain isn't falling. It's uh, overcast, but we've had so much rain overnight. You saw that last ball from Podsy Adelaide. It was a half a fumble, but uh, slippery still under feet. Yes, the sun belying the true conditions, you would think. Johnson 
Hacking it forward for the Pies. First chance to have a look at how their forward line will function. That'll boost the confidence. Cloak marks. Didax deep one-on-one. -on -one. It's set up for him. Working hard back doors. Could have been some infringement on him, but the umpire waves it on and says, no, it's Scarlet's ball. And you've seen this plenty of times. Mackey peels off and the Cats dash out of defence. Wojcinski back to Mackey. He's in stellar form. Kicks into the middle. 12 months makes a big difference for Andrew Mackey. Corey kicks to set a half forward. That's Wayward. And all hands on deck for the Pies. Cloak getting back to take the intercept mark. Steading and then sets a bit of a task for Thomas. He was up but couldn't complete the job. And the Cats will go forward through Bartel. He spots up Johnson who's got a bit of room here. Weighs up the options. Beautiful chip pass to Varco who can go back from 45 metres and kick his second. That is why you are so excited if you're a Geelong supporter that that man's playing. How about the vision there? It's almost a look away kick. Uh, this is the one before that worried me. It was a kick to Alan Didak on Matty Scarlett as the key forward position. Scarlett's going to win 9 out of 10 of those. Got to make sure Dawes is in that contest and brings it to ground. Travis Varco celebrated his 100th game with a goal in the opening seconds of the grand final. Now he can double that effort. It's coming back. Cats have got two. We see Dane Swan sitting on the interchange bench. Not his fault, but uh, two centre bounces and two centre clearances of Brad Otten. Let's see how Trent West, who's on the ground at the moment, can go against Darren Jolly. And Mel Travis. Davis, who knows well, grand final history, not great. He's had two kicked on him in the first four and a half minutes. Travis Varco hadn't kicked a goal in a grand final until today. Now he's got two, and the momentum early is with the Cats. Selwood's a hard man to restrain. Kelly drew some high contact also. No, it's a fend-off. Yeah. Okay. So it's the Collingwood ball. Hey, got a blue on behind play. Here's a fair bit going on. Play Tarrant. goes on. Cracker gives to Davis. Out wide. Makes it really difficult for Dawes. Gets the bounce he was after. Thomas only had a split second to make the kick. Got it to Cloak. Not quite the mark. It is difficult conditions for forwards. It's over and out. Yeah, this is happening uh, behind play. And you can see the top of your screen there. Maxwell just dumps Stokes to the ground. Podsy Adley gets involved. I don't think that little... Uh Fracard did Maxwell's thumb any favours either. Gets up a little bit to gingerly favouring that hand. Thomas in an impossible pocket. Kicks it out of bounds on the full. Yeah, just as he went to grab the jumper. Might have done a little bit of damage, of course, playing with a broken thumb. He got that just before the final started. For the Pies, uh, the upside, Travis Cloak looks really sharp early in the game. They need to keep him as close to goals as possible to put some scoreboard pressure on. Bartow Pods, he Adley climbing but not marking. Jolly improvising. Pods goes at it again and again. But they've got him covered here. Brett Rosebury goes for the whistle. Yeah, I'm just keeping a close eye on Darren Jolly as Lee Brown warms up. Interestingly, Brad Ottens has got off for a rest and Lee Brown putting his hand up saying, hey, Joel, it's my turn. You need to get off. And that kick around the body and he just looks a tiny bit uncomfortable after it. So Trent West enters the fray as a ruckman. Jolly heaves it onto the boot. Didak didn't get the bounce he was after. Kelly leaves it for Cracker. Slick, gee, Thomas really wanted it, and he made use of it too. Finds Luke Ball. It's say beyond his range normally, but this year, and just of recent times, he's been able to kick the clutch goals. Harry O'Brien's just lurking behind him in case he feels the need to lay it off. Yeah, he's kicked 17 goals too this year, Dust. Sorry, just looking at Darren Jolly, uh, Lloyd, he's caught up. Uh, his left knee trouble before he came into the... Uh, th that's the thing that's hurt him most of the year. That's sore, and he's currently limping as I keep uh, the binoculars on him. Eight straight from set shots. This will really test him. It's straight. Is it far enough? No. Right on the death. And just while that shot was happening, Alan didak has been taken off the ground. Lee Brown's come on. He's often the matchup that goes to Matthew Scull. Here's Gold Coast oh. goalpost cam, and we see the Trent West spoil. So Lee Brown will probably go to Matthew Scarlett now. So some worries for Collingwood early. Hunt brings the ball back into play. He looks for West at the back of the pack. Johnson kick ricochets off the knee of Chapman to the wing. Here's Stokes to Kelly. What a year he's had. He pumps it long to a one-on-one. -on -one. Hawkins against O'Brien. O'Brien way too good. Played in front and took the mark and showed the customary dash. He kicks back to the wing to side bottom. Can't to break the Wojcinski tackle. It was a beautiful tackle. Held the day for the Cats and then gets the free kick. That is a big win for David Wojcinski. Absolute huge play there from Wojcinski. Not only the tackle, but to get the free kick afterwards. Fantastic early in a grand final. So, Wojcinski from half-back, settles on half-forward, and Hawkins! Oh, what a mighty leap! 
Couldn't drag it down. Goes again, Reed. Equal to the task. The pies crash on in. Sean Ryan holds the whistle and eventually calls for another bounce. Here's another look at what the goal umpire was looking at. There was nothing in it. West climbed the highest. And he climbs again over Jolly. Trying to sweep through with Selwood, but Wellingham to ball. You got a feeling he is going to be a prime mover for the Pies today, as is that man Cloak crashing in. Been a great start to this game for the Cats. Uh, look at Sharon William just come in and uh, a little well placed knee there to the uh, back region of uh, Stokes. Kelly, great clearance to half forward. Davis couldn't snaffle it to the 50. Johnson. It's a wild old handball. Came off though to Stokes. Ducked out of the tackle. Squaring kick. Terrence there for Collingwood. Under a fair bit of pressure. Back to Reed. Reed to O'Brien. Uh, Harry O'Brien measures the kick. Shorts it to Ball. To Davis. To Cracker. Good run out of defence for Collingwood. Leon Davis to the wing. Nice delivery to Cloak. This is a good build-up from Collingwood. Cloak. Towards Brown in front, sport by Scarlett. Mackey, great little precise handball off to Taylor. He gives it to Scarlett, and the ball trickles over the line for a throw in. And you got the match up exactly right, uh, Lloydie. Lee Brown straight on to Matty Scarlett. And uh, I'm told when he first came to Collingwood, his whole role was going to be play forward. You become the aggressor. Play on people like Scarlett. Get in his face. You don't care if you don't touch the footy. Just get down and cause as much disturbance down there as you can. And here he goes again. Couldn't get the connection he was after, so it's up at the 50 cracker. Resilience shown from Corey and Kelly and Maxwell. Out to Wellingham, a bit of an opening. Decided to go for Johnson at familiar style. Maybe took a moment too long and Mackey gets it over. It's always going to be about the tough stuff, isn't it? The smothers and the tackles, and we saw it there. And Geelong's pressure, we see Mackey here. They're kicking at 45%, the Magpies. The Cats at 75%, so everything going Geelong's way at the moment. No goals to the Magpies after 10 minutes, but... A long way to go. Johnson from the restraint of Selwood got it through to Tuvi. And now Pendlebury to add a bit of class to the mix to full forward. And speaking of class, Scarlett, as he's been doing since he played on you way back in his first game in 1998, Lloydie, leading the Cats defence, gets it to Chapman and they are away. He floats one and a half forward. Swan, the Brownlow medalist, gets there first for Collingwood. It'll give to Davis, who's starting to come into the game. To the wing. Nice delivery to Wellingham. To Jolly. He's got side bottom in support. Short down the line. And a solid mark taken by Cloak. Too far out to score. It's about 65 from goal. There's a brown lead. Ignored. So Cloak loads up. It's a monster kick. It's coming back. He's made it easily. That is a monster. Oh, he's had a huge year, Travis Cloak, and he gives you confidence if you're a Collingwood supporter. That was a massive kick. It's travelled 60 metres. He's taken four marks, had three inside 50s and kicked the goal in the first 12 minutes. And he hadn't kicked one on Harry Taylor in the previous two encounters, so that is a huge boost. Christensen enters the fray and gets the Cats forward again. Here's Hawkins versus Reed, and Reed clamping on. He wanted a three, but the umpire said the line came first. Man in town now, Harry Kuehl, watching on intently and this struggle. Selwood, I think, would thrive in these conditions. Brown was able to snatch it away and swan the Brownlow medalist. Here's this duel, it's going to be so pivotal. And it's going one way at the moment to Cloak. But the Cats have got good backup, so too though. Johnson's been lively, terrific tackle from in right to mow him down. And now it surges, Johnson maybe a little too cute that time. Swan used ball, had no mates at all, and was caught holding the ball. Defensive pressure from the Cats so far in this game has been extraordinary. We saw the Wojcinski tackle that ran uh, someone down from behind, and again, a big play for the Cats. Christensen into the pocket, Hawkins went up with a one mitt. Pods Yadley in there, Hawkins has another crack, spills to Reed. Off to Pendlebury, he's got some room to move here. But players in support, left and right, goes to Johnson, to Tuvi. Oh, got the staggers. Fortunately for him, knocked it on to Cloak. He just bangs it off the ground. Didak got nutmegged. 
We've got a throw-in on centre wing as Jolly is on the boundary line. 